Most of us already know the phrase, practice makes perfect. Of course, what works for the average consumer also applies to the world of science. Test runs and experiments are essential to try out new technologies, decipher natural processes, and verify theories. While some experiments by researchers have already helped us to reach some milestones of our time, other scientific tests have ended in real catastrophes. We will now show you which 10 questionable experiments ultimately went horribly wrong. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the strangest science experiments to have ever been conducted in modern history. You won't want to miss this one. My Child, the Chimpanzee Surely you have heard of the exciting cases in which children grew up alone among animals in the middle of the wilderness. While those people, far from any civilization, adapted the most diverse behaviors of their animal contemporaries, the psychologist Winthrop Niles Kellogg asked himself in the early 1930s how such a scenario would actually work the other way around. For this reason, he brought a chimpanzee baby named Gua into his house where Winthrop's wife and his little son Donald also lived. To test if the young ape would adopt human behavior patterns or ultimately even think it was human, Gua and Donald were raised the same way. In addition to ordinary daily life, the couple and their mismatched children conducted an extensive series of scientific experiments. Among other things, language comprehension, the ability to solve problems, reactions to physical stimulation, and manual dexterity were tested. While it seemed at first that Gua was making great progress, after a few weeks it became clear that the chimpanzee did not change its ancestral instincts and behaviors despite all external influences. These days, we all understand that chimps are not animals to be toyed with. They can be incredibly powerful, even at a young age. Bringing such an animal around a child is simply begging for trouble. While nothing seems to have gone horribly wrong in this specific case, there have been hundreds of reports of chimps that have gone berserk on humans in recent years. This seems to have been a very interesting experiment, but unfortunately, it didn't yield the results that the doctor had hoped for. So it happened that the unusual experiment ended after nine months and the monkey left the family. So while it initially appeared as if the test run had been completely fruitless, a closer look revealed that this was not the case. It just went completely different than expected. In fact, it wasn't the chimpanzee Gua, but the toddler Donald who underwent unexpected changes during the experiment. So instead of developing basic human language skills, the boy began imitating the sounds of his hairy contemporary. Monster Study The so-called Monster Study was conducted in 1939. In detail, it was a language-based experiment that was carried out on 22 orphans, while half of the young test subjects were praised with the highest marks for their fluent speech. The others were to be degraded and punished for their language weaknesses. The negative psychological effects that the monster study had on some of the orphans would lead to severe mental disorders in their adult lives. Some participants were even so scarred by the consequences of the experiment that they struggled with language problems for the rest of their days. Incidentally, the test run earned the inglorious nickname the monster study because the use of small orphan children as test objects was classified as inhuman. However, this only happened afterward. During the implementation, the questionable monster study was kept top secret. It's incredibly unfortunate for these orphans to have been put through a situation like this. What's even more concerning is that the test was kept a secret. It stands to reason that if the researchers kept such an experiment a secret, they knew there would be a public outcry. And if this is true, chances are these researchers knew that what they were doing was wrong. Though regardless, they continued with the experiments anyway. The experiment certainly provided us with lots of valuable information, but it's a shame that these poor children were subjected to such punishment. David Reimer When David Reimer was six months old, he was diagnosed with a deformity to his nether regions. The subsequent operation to fix the problem failed, however, and the small child's appendage was irreparably damaged. On the advice of scientist John Money, the boy's parents decided to have David undergo gender reassignment surgery and henceforth raise him as a girl named Brenda. When the child hit puberty, he was also treated with female hormones. 
Because David had an identical twin brother named Brian, John Money saw the child's story as an opportunity for a groundbreaking scientific test. He wanted to use the case to prove that a person's gender-specific identity is shaped solely by their upbringing in childhood. While Money described Brenda in his remarks as a completely normal, happy girl, those around her perceived her as a deeply sad child. At the age of 14, David finally found out that he had actually been born a boy. From now on, he took his birth name of David back and had some procedures performed that made him physically a man again. But David was never really happy again in his life. After the death of his twin brother, the separation from his wife, and the loss of his job, David Reimer took his own life at the age of 38. While the subject may be a bit taboo these days, cases like this certainly explain why it's important to wait and make sure children are of a reasonable age and of a sound mind before making life-altering decisions about gender issues. Stanford Prison Experiment The Stanford Prison Experiment is one of the most controversial psychological experiments of the past. Back then in 1971, 24 students were divided into guards and prisoners in order to simulate everyday prison life in the basement of Stanford University as authentically as possible. However, it wasn't long before the experiment went haywire. In order to maintain discipline in the makeshift prison, the group of guards took increasingly drastic measures. The detainees were denied access to the toilet. Instead, they had to relieve themselves in buckets in their cell. In turn, several prisoners were crammed together in a very small space in the corresponding cells. The guards put down a rebellion by the prisoners using fire extinguishers, and the inmates were then stripped of their beds and clothing. As the guards became more and more sadistic, and several prisoners had already suffered emotional breakdowns, the Stanford prison experiment had to be ended prematurely. Yellow Fever Experiment in the late 18th century, the U.S. city of Philadelphia was hit by a severe yellow fever epidemic that claimed the lives of thousands of residents. However, since it was not yet known in detail how the disease spreads, the doctor Stubbins Firth decided to carry out the most disgusting experiment possible. Based on his observations, which showed that the number of yellow fever cases was significantly higher in summer than in winter, he put forward the thesis that it was not an infectious disease, but an affliction that is favored by heat and other environmental influences. In order to prove that the disease was not contagious, the doctor began eating his patient's vomit in a variety of ways, including drinking it. Since he had no severe symptoms to complain about, he saw this theory confirmed. If he couldn't get sick by directly eating a patient's vomit, that would mean that the disease is not contagious, right? Well, not exactly. We now know that yellow fever is a serious, contagious, and infectious disease. Since it is transmitted by mosquitoes, which are known to be active mainly in summer, the seasonal difference in the incidence of the disease can also be explained. However, why Stubbins Firth did not contract yellow fever himself during his experiment remains a great mystery. Some theorize that it's because he only consumed the bodily fluids of late-stage patients, but this is merely a theory. Whatever the case may be, one thing's for sure, this doctor was a very strange man. Tusco. The year is 1962 when an elephant named Tusco is given 297 milligrams of LSD, arguably the highest dose of the hallucinogenic drug ever injected into a living being. But how does one actually come up with the idea of sending a majestic pachyderm on such an extreme trip? Officially, Dr. Louis Jolien West and his two colleagues were simply testing the effects LSD has on elephants. For the elephant, however, the experiment was to end fatally. After the substance entered his body, he completely lost control of his limbs, collapsed, and eventually died. The scientist's cynical conclusion was merely that elephants appear to be highly sensitive to LSD. TGN 1412 In 2006, a medical trial was conducted with the laudable goal of revolutionizing the treatment of autoimmune diseases and blood cancer. In order for this to succeed, a company from Würzburg developed the antibody TGN-1412, which had already been successfully tested on animals and cell cultures. Finally, it was time to test the effect of the novel antibody on humans as well, with catastrophic consequences. All six men who had been administered the drug showed severe reactions such as headaches, fever, and vomiting within a few minutes. One of the participants said he felt like he was being burned alive. But the situation was to become even more dramatic. 
Finally, multiple organ failures were found in the subjects, which meant that some of them had to be artificially ventilated and fought for their lives in the intensive care unit for days. One of those affected even fell into a coma for three weeks. Syphilis Human Experiments What do inhuman scientists who want to test the effects of a drug do when they don't have enough volunteers to do so? That's right, they deliberately infect hundreds of people with the disease they're investigating. So it was that between 1946 and 1948, countless people in Guatemala were intentionally infected with syphilis in order to subsequently try treatment with penicillin. Although between 1,300 and 2,000 people were infected, only 700 of them were ultimately treated. In the remaining cases, it was simply observed how the untreated course of the disease developed. At least 83 people died in this questionable series of tests. However, it would not be until 2010 before the syphilis human experiments in Guatemala became public. Milgram Experiment The now world-famous Milgram Experiment was carried out in 1961 to prove that average people would still obey authoritarian orders even if they conflicted with their own moral standards. The starting point of the series of tests was as follows. The test subjects slipped into the roles of teachers, whereby they were to give their students electric shocks on the instructions of a test leader if they gave an incorrect answer. The intensity of the electric shocks increased with each wrong answer. What the teachers who were responsible for triggering the electric shocks did not know was that all the experimenters and students were actors and the electric shocks did not actually occur. In fact, 26 participants went up to the maximum voltage of 450 volts. Only 14 test subjects broke off the experiment early, with all the others completing the test successfully. MK Ultra. Anyone who had thought the human experiments presented so far could not be surpassed has probably never heard of MK Ultra. This was a top secret CIA research program conducted between 1953 and the early 1970s. This comprehensive series of experiments was intended to test the extent to which people's consciousness can be actively manipulated and controlled. At the end of this controversial experiment would be the development of a groundbreaking serum that would force every person to tell the truth. The test subjects, who are usually completely clueless, were given hallucinogenic drugs such as mescaline and LSD. Many of the involuntary test subjects suffered severe mental and physical damage, and some even died. When the cruel test runs finally hit the headlines at the beginning of the 1970s, the CIA worked flat out to destroy almost all relevant files without permission. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the presented experiments and their negative consequences? We look forward to your comments. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss one of our videos again. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time.